So good evening, um, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to PAL's Ottawa, PAL Ottawa's Online Arts Festival, Spotlight 2021. My name is David Globerman, and I am the coordinator of Supporting Cast, which is part of PAL Ottawa. I'll be your host tonight. Uh, before we get started, I, I should inform you that this presentation by Yadja is being recorded, and we will be posting it on the PAL YouTube channel. Um, now, you, if you don't want to be on camera, you can certainly mute your um, video. If you do want to be on camera, uh, you can just leave it the way it is. I would ask you to mute your mics, though, and also shut off your or yeah, shut off your cell phones and uh, put them on vibrate. Uh, during the presentation, uh, Yadja will more than likely call on different people here. We have 28 participants so far. It'll probably increase as um, in the next uh, five, 10 minutes. And she will uh, call on you to, uh, to show your work, maybe randomly. And uh, I would ask that your camera be on for that period, uh, for that time, uh, definitely. So I'll leave it to you whether or not you want to leave your camera on and off. If you're comfortable, that's fine. If you're not, that's also fine. Um, so Palo Alto would like to acknowledge the generous support of the New Horizons program, which is part of Employment and Social Development Canada that provided the funding for this fantastic arts festival. Um, now, for those of you that are new to Palo Alto, the organization provides arts workers and that's you know dancers, uh, actors, uh, visual artists, ceramic artists, uh, the whole gamut of arts workers. Uh, it, it, the organization provides those workers aged 55 and over that are either you know, active workers or retired with affordable housing and health and social supports in a caring and, uh, caring and creative community. And this you know, keeps us pretty busy because we're, we're trying to keep like all organizations, um, current with the needs of our constituency. There's probably 3,000 or so, maybe three to 3,000 to 3,500 arts workers in the city. Um, so our membership is always is growing and it's very important that we understand what their needs are because people in the arts do have um, unique needs. So uh, I would ask you to, um, check out our website at www.palottawa.org, www.palottawa.org for more information uh, about, about the organization. Um, the arts festival that PAL is putting on is uh, it's a great opportunity to support, support those arts workers presenting many who are living at or below the poverty line. Believe it or not, the average salary for somebody in the arts is about seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars, and during this horrid pandemic, which which is lingering on, for which has been lingering on for more than a year, um, their their revenues are, are are down from that. So it's been a very very difficult uh, year for uh, people in the arts. At the same time, the arts workers that you'll see and have seen over the course of this festival uh, seek to provide entertainment, education, and enlightenment which is very important to our community who are so greatly negatively impacted by this COVID pandemic. So hopefully initiatives such as this festival will encourage people of all ages to take out a membership with PAL, it's not expensive, give a donation, whatever you can to the organization so that we can carry out our important mission. I'd like to welcome, um, our presenter for tonight, Yadja Romaniak. I hope I said that correct, Yadja. Yadja is an Ottawa artist with over. 20, thank you. Is an Yadja is an Ottawa artist with over twenty years of experience of twenty years of exhibitions to her name, and she's worked uh, as an art therapist with the Salvation Army Stabilization Program, Canadian Breast Cancer Network, Bereaved Families of Ontario, and the National Gaucher Foundation of Canada. And Yadja has also taught art classes for adults with the city of Ottawa and at the Wild Pigment Studio and also led drawing classes with the Ottawa Carleton District School Board 
and Ashbury College. So a woman with a lot of experience and a lot of talent. So without any further delay, let's give a round of applause to Yadja. Thank you. Thank you very much, David, and thank you all for being here. So, um, and without further delay, we're just going to jump right in because I don't want to lose anybody on account of nerves or cold feet or anything like that. This is going to be a little bit of a different art experience than maybe some of you are used to because the idea here is using art as a means or as a lens through which we can see ourselves. And I have permission from our friend Carl Jung uh, to do this. So I'd like to start with two Carl Jung quotes. One is, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens. So we are all going to have a little bit of an awakening, I hope, today. And the other thing that Carl Jung said was that Humans produce in art the inner images the soul needs in order to see itself and to allow its own transformation. So I feel very strongly that art and art making, whether it's visual art, dance, music, film, literature, whatever it happens to be, is a message from deep within from the soul. And it's about reaching out to other human beings and a form of connection. And I cannot take credit for those ideas. They come again from our friend Carl Jung and many other smart, smart, smart people. So we are going to have a little workshop tonight. Whether or not we produce something that looks good, something that you might be inclined to call art, may or may not happen. But nevertheless, we are going to do something. We are going to have a very explicit set of instructions, not about how to do art, but rather responding and how to think about something and how to use our materials. And we'll get to that in a minute. Speaking of materials, I, um, I had sent uh, a list to David and hopefully you've got some of those things ready. So we have our typical, perhaps some markers, maybe different colors that you have grouped, maybe some pencils and different pens. We just want different things. Thank you. We have maybe, maybe some scissors, a ruler, maybe uh, yarn, if you happen to have some yarn or thread around extra. I've also suggested post-it notes. They can be stuck onto our surface. Uh, I happen to have some old labels that I'm going to be, well, I'm not going to be using it. Actually, I have a hand, we were speaking earlier of um, the Adams family. And in the Adams family, you see this hand that does stuff. And we're gonna have this Adams family hand doing, there it comes, the hand that's going to do the art. Not gonna be me. I also have a box of pastels, different colors. It's okay if you don't have all this stuff. What I'd like you to have is just four, five, six, maybe, different media with which you can make a mark or a shape. I have finally um, some different colored pieces of paper. Maybe you have some magazines, things like that. So the idea here is I am going to read a story. I am going to read this story in very, very short segments. When I pause in the story, just after a sentence or two, I would ask you to respond to anything that you heard in the story. It could be a color. It could be an image of something. It could be something that you saw that perhaps, this is an example only, um, 
once there was a person who went to the Eiffel Tower, if you want to draw the Eiffel Tower, or perhaps you remember that when you went to the Eiffel Tower, uh, you wore a white necklace, you could draw the white necklace. This drawing part of it does not have to be any good. It does not have to look like a necklace or an Eiffel Tower or whatever you want to look like. It's about making marks. It's about releasing stuff from your brain out through your fingertips and letting it go. So for the first part of our story, you can grab any drawing instrument that is on your table. So whether you pick up a marker or a pencil or a pastel crayon, anything you want, just pick it up in your usual hand. And we're going to just have a little response. I'm going to read two sentences and then you'll have about two minutes, possibly two and a half, if you're lucky, if I see everybody's full concentration going on to respond to what you heard in the story. And I will read it twice, two times. So here we go. In a small Italian town, hundreds of years ago, a small business owner owed a large sum of money to a loan shark. The loan shark was a very old, unattractive looking guy that just so happened to fancy the business owner's daughter. Don't think, let your images come, let your responses come. I'm going to read it again and you'll have about two and a half minutes to make whatever response that you would like. Here I'm reading it again now. In a small Italian town, hundreds of years ago, a small business owner owed a large sum of money to a loan shark. The loan shark was a very old, unattractive looking guy that just so happened to fancy the business owner's daughter. And the hand is just doing its own thing, the one I have here. You are not to, to, uh, invited to do what my hand, what the hand here is doing. That's just a, a friend that I called in to, to be the hand. <laughs>
Okay, please put down whatever you have in your hand. And please pick up your paper. In this case, I'm using this one on the easel. Please rotate your paper 90 degrees. And please pick up something different, something that you were not using before as we listen to the next part of the story. So we're talking now about the loan shark. He decided to offer the businessman a deal that would completely wipe out the debt that he owed him. However, the catch was that we would only wipe out the debt if he could marry the businessman's daughter. It's always that way, isn't it? Anyway, needless to say, this proposal was met with a look of disgust. Oh. You're frozen, Jadzia? Jadzia? Hi, Yaja, if you can hear me, you're frozen. Look of disgust. Did I, if I uh, temporarily muted there, was you, everybody able to hear all that? You no, were no. muted. I'm going to read it one more time again. Got all my techies here now, so we should be better. Okay, one more time. He decided to offer the businessman a deal that would completely wipe out the debt he owed him. However, the catch was that we would only wipe out the debt if he could marry the businessman's daughter. Needless to say, this proposal was met with a look of disgust. You're frozen again. Oh, uh, so you're doing your drawing now for two and a half minutes with a different instrument than you used before and with your paper having been rotated 90 degrees. Yeah, Jim. Yes. Hi, it's Dave. Yes. If it, could you tilt the easel uh, like the right side, push it, uh, angle it a different way. Does that help? Uh, yeah, and maybe push the right part of it in, and the left. Away, David. Uh, well, the no, though the right part towards the wall, and the left away from the wall, like angle it. No, the other way. The other, oh, the other wow. way. Yeah, and that maybe better? put it a little more vertical. A little more vertical. Yep, I can. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit uh, 
blanch. I don't know if you can make the lighting a little not so bright. Is yeah, I is think we can. I think we can. Does that help? Because yes, that's better. Is that better? Yeah, that's so it doesn't really matter what we see. Um, I remember the name of the hand on um, the Adams family thing it was called. So things art is, you know, just a little bit of stuff, but it's just an example. All right, so please put your instruments down. Thing is messy, throwing its things all over the floor. Okay, so the next part of the story you uh well i'm going to read it and then give you your instruction as to how to uh, do this this is the next part of the story the lone shark said he would place two pebbles into a bag one white and one black the daughter would then have to reach into the bag and pick out a pebble if it was black the debt would be wiped but the loan shark would then marry her. If it was white, the debt would also be wiped, but the daughter wouldn't have to marry the loan shark. So we're now going to respond to that part of the story and I will read it again. This time I would like you to pick up your drawing tool or instrument in your non-dominant hand, please. If you are right-handed, please use your left hand. If you are ordinarily left-handed, please pick up your drawing or painting tool, whatever it is, your choice. Please use your right hand. In any case, the non-dominant hand, we're dragging in that other half of the brain here. I'll read that part again. The lone shark said he would place two pebbles into a bag, one white and one black. The daughter would then have to reach into the bag and pick out a pebble. If it was black, the debt would be wiped, but the lone shark would then marry her. If it was white, the debt would also be wiped, but the daughter would not have to marry the lone shark. Lisa, do you have a question? That, that was up to let you know I couldn't hear you when you froze in. I'm not able to get rid of it. I'm clicking on it. You should oh, okay. Um, okay. I think it'll just go away by itself. Okay. But um, you, it's, it's really, yeah. it's, it looks good. It looks good, Lisa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's yeah, my well, drawing hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then that's good because you're supposed to use your other hand for this part. So that's all good. Yeah. And in this part of the story, I'd also like you to add either three letters or three symbols into your piece. Three letters from the alphabet or numbers, I guess, or symbols of some type. So we're talking about some kind of graphic information. So we're still working with our wrong hand. 
And you can change what you're using to, to make your marks with, but please continue to use your non-dominant hand. Okay, kindly put down your drawing instrument and listen very carefully to the next part of the story and the instruction. So, standing on a pebble strewn path in the businessman's garden, the lone shark bent over and picked up two pebbles. Whilst he was picking them up, the daughter noticed that he'd picked up two black pebbles and placed them both into the bag. He then asks the daughter to reach into the bag and pick one. So this time, before I read again, we're going to turn our paper again, another 90 degrees. So now it should be upside down in your original starting point. And I've got these clips. I'm just going to use these clips to hold my paper on because it's up. So it's quite a different orientation. And whoa. David, is that okay? Can we still see that more or less? Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, okay. And uh, okay, so I'll just read that part of the story again. This time, I would like you to close your eyes. Pick up something to draw with. Yeah, Shannon. <laughs> I can see your look of horror over there. You're going to, so if you want to pick a point right now where you're going to start with your eyes open and then close your eyes, like pick a point on your paper, just so you make sure you're drawing on the paper and not, gosh, I don't know, on your kitchen floor or something. So pick a point on the paper where you're going to draw, close your eyes and respond to this part of the story. Standing on a pebble strewn path in the businessman's garden, the lone shark bent over and picked up two pebbles. Whilst he was picking them up, the daughter noticed that he would picked up two black pebbles and placed them both in the bag. He then asked the daughter to reach into the bag and pick one. Oh, you can change back to your dominant hand now. I'm so sorry I didn't say that earlier. Please feel free to return to your regular hand. Maintaining a closed eye. I'm going to hold that for a little bit more. Yeah, hard, eh? <laughs> bit difficult, perhaps. Bit frustrating. A bit disorienting. All good for your soul's release, <laughs> I hope. Okay, please put down your instruments and open your eyes. That's what we do. Not bad, eh? <laughs> All right, I'm going to read the next bit of the story. We're almost at the end. Okay, this is, this is a, a fair amount. The daughter naturally had three choices as to what she could have done. One, refused to pick a pebble from the bag. Two, 
take both pebbles out of the bag and expose the lone shark for cheating. Three, pick a pebble from the bag, fully well knowing it was black, and sacrifice herself for her father's freedom. She drew a pebble from the bag, and before looking at it, she, oops, accidentally dropped it into the midst of other pebbles. I'll read that again. The daughter, oh, sorry, and this time you can choose anything you want to write or draw with. You can add little bits of ripped up paper. You can put sticky notes on it. You can glue uh, your thread on it. I also, I, I have these um, cupcake papers I had found. They also could be glued on. However you wish to respond, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to read that little part again. The daughter naturally had three choices as to what she could have done. One, refuse to pick a pebble from the bag. Two, take both pebbles out of the bag and expose the lone shark for cheating. Three, pick a pebble from the bag, fully knowing it was black and sacrifice herself for her father's freedom. She drew out a pebble from the bag and before looking at it, oops, accidentally dropped it into the midst of other pebbles. So, in this little section, we're going to have what's called rapid fire drawing. At least that's what I call this. I'm going to ask you to draw and then stop and then draw and then stop and then draw and then stop and a fourth time. Okay, rapid fire drawing, draw, stick, cut, glue, color, paint, whatever. Please stop for just a few seconds. So here we're having an interruption to your train of thought. And go, draw, stick, glue, cut, paste, whatever you want to do. On the edges, in the middle, a big swish, a tiny mark, dots, jagged lines, circles, squares, letters, numbers, whatever you want, do it. Stop. You can change your instruments if you want. Ready for another couple of drawing bursts. Who said art isn't all, you know, like an action movie? We're, we're so hot in action here. Fast paced art going on. Okay, go rapid fire, cut, stick, glue, paint, move your arms. Move your wrists, fingers, stand up, move your body. Go, go, go. And stop. Is that, how many is that, three? One more short burst. This one's gonna be really fast. Go, 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 breathe in, breathe out. You can do it, we're almost there, we're almost there. And stop, please. Please put your instruments down. Now, for the next part, Remember, she, the, uh, the, the beautiful daughter has accidentally dropped the pebble. She said to the lone shark, oh, how clumsy of me. Never mind, if you look into the bag for the one that is left, 
you will be able to tell which pebble I picked. Very smart, I think. For this one, I would like you to trace the shape of your hand somewhere on your paper. It can be coming off your page, can be in the middle, wherever you choose. And it corresponds to the sentence where the prince or the girl says, oh, how clumsy of me, never mind. If you look into the bag for the one that is left, you will be able to tell which pebble I picked. <laughs> And we're tracing our hand somewhere with whatever you choose. It could be a marker, a pencil, nail polish, paint, whatever you have. Are we the right way down? And please put your uh, drawing instrument down and turn your paper again 90 degrees. Rotate your paper 90 degrees. So yet, you know how life is. It brings you a lot of new perspectives. So that's what we're doing here. We're getting a new perspective again. And we are almost at the end. So this is uh, this time, what I would like you to do, if possible, is instead of holding your hand close to your paper like this, or like this, I would like you to hold whatever you have. In my case, I'm holding a marker. If you can go back from your work and hold it right at the end and use your full arm to make your marks using a full extended arm. And the part that we are responding to in the story is, the pebble left in the bag is obviously black. And seeing as the loan shark didn't want to be exposed, he had to play along as if the pebble the daughter had dropped was white and he cleared her father's debt. I'll read that again. The pebble left in the bag is obviously black and seeing as the loan shark didn't want to be exposed, he had to play along as if the pebble the daughter, the daughter had dropped was white and he cleared her father's debt.
Okay, in a moment, yeah. Okay, so we've got about another minute just to wrap things up. Okay, let's start wrapping up and talking about why on earth we would spend time doing this. Why on earth we would sign up for this crazy kind of little exploration. Well, as I said, it's to get to know each uh, ourselves. Um, perhaps in a different way than you're accustomed to. We often think, 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 think about ourselves and what we've done. And that's all really good. And sometimes we talk with our friends and they're very helpful to let us understand ourselves. And sometimes we talk with a therapist and that's also helpful, or we may read a book, but very often we're stuck in a closed loop of words and this thinking. This is another way of processing, noticing. It's a technique of noticing what have we responded to and how we have responded to it. Even though I gave many instructions and some of them were pretty explicit, there's still a lot of freedom and as to how we went about doing things. So I just like to demonstrate with a couple of things I've noticed in the piece created by um, thing, the hand. If you could just bring the thing a bit forward. Thank you very much. So in this piece, which was created here, we're going to notice things are very separate and scattered throughout the page. This is not right and this is not wrong. It is not good and it is not bad. It simply is the way this person, this artist approaches things. There's not a lot of centrality. In fact, the middle portion of this page is perhaps the lightest, the less least used. Things are stuck, particularly the three dimensional things are stuck towards the edge. What does this mean? What's the hidden meaning? only our artist will know for sure. But what it leads us to do is a way of looking at your own work. Where have you placed things? Have you placed things more in the middle of your page? Have you placed them towards the edges? Are things generally separate? In this case, things are by and large separate. There's not a lot of overlap. The main part of overlap is where the eyes were closed. That part was done here, which is a little bit interesting because normally this artist has this or this person, the way they work is to spread things out. Yet on the closed eye part, they maintained a small sort of field area where they were working in very different eyes closed to eyes open, which yes, is a different situation, but also their technique changed quite a lot. So take a look at your own work. Are things equally balanced? Are they all in the center of the page? Are they on perhaps one side more than another? Is there perhaps a diagonal? orientation to things, a horizontal orientation to things? Do things stay in the page or do they leap out of the edges? I think in this one, there's an inclination towards trying to get off the edges 
I don't know if you managed to see it, but when the hand was traced, the hand was traced such that it's coming off the edge of the page. Now, I have my friend, uh, Michelle, who kindly did volunteer for me to pick on her. So I'm picking on her as my first person. And then it would be wonderful if anybody else could step forward. Michelle. Was it, could you hold up your art and could you tell us, are you finding that it's in the bit? Oh, oh boy, all around the edges again. Does it look, is it, that's how it looks to me. Not a whole lot of stuff in the center. How do you find it, Michelle? That's very interesting, dynamic, jaggedy lines, lots of, <laughs> yeah. um, Well, I did, I used the whole, the whole page. Great. And I, it looks to me like I did a, like a story a little bit. Okay. And I realized that I didn't, I didn't show the, the woman involved at all, which struck me. And uh, oh. when I had my eyes closed, I just made stones, you know, I just dotted all around the thing. So that was my, those are things I noticed about it. Well, that's very interesting. And it's interesting that you did not include the figure of the the daughter, the beautiful daughter. And um, Michelle, and you don't have to say anything, but just a question was, did you perhaps identify with that daughter? Was this, you know, about you? And of course, this is a morality tale. This is, you know, the, the evil um, loan shark and the, the, the beautiful innocent maiden, except she's, you know, pretty wily and smart. Um, but when you're put into these life situations, when you care about another person, what are you going to do? You know, it's one of these stories. Um, Michelle, was there any part of it that, of any part of the process that really resonated with you? Did you like it with eyes closed? Did you like or dislike using your non-dominant hand? Did you like or dislike any aspect of it? And it's okay if you hated the whole thing. <laughs> um, I liked trying to use my uh, my non-dominant hand. I enjoyed that because I like to see the difference and it's helpful to me just to get a sense of things. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't mind uh, doing in my, having my eyes closed. I, I thought it was interesting when you say it, change you your see, hand. Michelle, Michelle yeah. can I just ask you whether there's been a, a request for you to hold up your art again while you speak about it? Yeah. Okay. Great. So let's see if I can get this straight. Uh, okay. I think that's pretty good. Oh, that's, that's pretty good right around there, maybe. Yeah. And uh, so, so, uh, there's one angle of it we're not getting very well but anyway oh there 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 I got yeah. more of it there so anyway yes yeah, so I just that uh, when you said to change back to our dominant hand when we had our eyes closed I yeah. thought oh really I don't know but I, I like just the feeling of it to, just because it's helpful to me to understand that um the body um just feels things differently depending on how you put it forward you know uh, and I thought that was that was helpful yeah and in terms of the story I have to say I I was so pleased when the the woman you know got this great idea and I thought wow if I were ever stuck in something like that I'd love to be able to <laughs> yeah. that but but yeah why didn't I put her in I don't know I guess because this she had no power for me I thought she had no power when until that, the end. Until the end. Ta-da. There she had it. Right, right. Is there anybody who did include the uh, beautiful daughter? Donna, can you tell us about your beautiful daughter? Oh, uh, uh, Donna, ma uh, unmute yourself, please. There. Okay. You. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Here's my picture. It's a bit of a mess. It's Ooh. all over the place. Okay. I, I started out with a castle, like the Italian town on a hill. And then I drew the, the girl crying. I don't know oh. if you can see this. Yeah. Um, she's basically crying. Just a crude picture of that. And then after that, I got entranced by the pebbles. So right. there's pebbles everywhere. 
There's there a are. Yeah, and it, I, I got to the point where I didn't care where I was putting them. They were just all over the place. So I really enjoyed that. Um, so Donna, can I ask you to consider something? All yeah. those pebbles, and these are throughout, and this is a repetitive shape. Yes. Do you find in your life that you tend to like repetitive things like that? Music, perhaps with a very firm beat, or like, do you tend to go with things that are repetitive or the same? I think you can, uh, please feel free to put it down now. Thank you for <laughs> showing that, yeah. No, no, I mean, you know, I think we've seen, it's hard to hold it up and talk. So I, the idea, is yeah so we noticed michelle said she kind of liked the freedom or the sensory experience of having her eyes closed things felt different and she was observing how her body was kind of responding through this different way of handling the art material you have got very strong repetitive motions throughout your piece what That's do you right. know about that um, I do, I do like uh, uh, repetition. I find it soothing. And I think that uh, it's come out. And as I started to do it, it started out as circles, but then it started to become coils. Ah. And, and so there's that, that continuity. And it was more really the movement of the hand that I was more interested in than actually what was going down on the paper. Right. So your physical experience became very important. It was more your body rather than the idea of the story in your mind. So it became yeah. an experience on a completely different level, not a thinking level, but way an experiential level, which I think is very interesting. But it and it's all contained on the page somehow. Yeah. Right, you, and I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm not in the middle, I'm not in the sides, I'm everywhere yeah. on, the, on the painting. Do you know, and you may not know, if you identified with the princess in the store, with the daughter, sorry, in this story? I don't think so. I, I, I was the watcher. Okay. I didn't, yeah. You were, you were kind of uh, able to distance yourself. I Anybody was. else notice anything? Was there anything that you particularly liked or disliked? Did you um, hate it when you had to change hands or change instruments? How about that paper turning around? That really disrupted flow, didn't it? And that was kind of the point in that you're forced to take a new look and to reorient yourself. How do you do with that? Any volunteers? Yeah, I can. Yes. Oh. Yeah, Jen, go ahead, please, Jen. Okay, sure. Um, so, um, can you just hold it slightly back? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. So it looks to me that your work is highly, from from what I can see, and I may be wrong, but it looks highly symbolic. Little arrows, lines quite different from Donna's very organic looking circles and coils. Am I saying it, that correctly, Jen? No, it is. Um, like the first one is definitely much more like illustrative. It's pretty light. It's in pencil since I okay. was using oh, my okay. hand and right. I could erase. And then uh -huh. um, once I switched to other materials, I do think it became more um, symbols versus illustrative. Um, the thing about turning the paper, since yes. I didn't know like how many more steps or how many more drawings right. you're going to have us do. Yeah, um, that created like an interesting, like, well, where am I going to put this on the paper? I'm starting to run out of room and- yeah. I, I think the anxiety tendency, creeping yeah. in, right? I think the tendency is to, okay, it's each exercise, so I need to keep them separate. I also, I um, teach primary school younger kids, so um, I think also my, I guess, mindset coming into it was how can I use this in the classroom, or just that it is like a different way of um, 
focusing on a story and like pulling out those different elements and how could I like tweak that and just sort of looking at, um, you know, I like trying it out myself to see kind of what that feels like to know how I would use it. So yeah, I liked it. So Jen, I'm not sure, and this could be way off, but it sounds like you were heavily in planning mode. You were <laughs> making use of, okay, I've got this much space left. I don't know how many more turns and, and things she's going to have us do. I've got to start thinking of how to use my resources. And then you even went to another level. How can I apply this to my work? very heavy planning mind. Is yeah. that how you generally are in your life? Are you kind of planning all the time? Yes. <laughs> I mean, so it is interesting like to have that come out, but yeah, that is yeah. definitely accurate. Well, I'll tell you a secret. The way <laughs> we do one thing is often the way we do many things. And that's part of this exercise is to observe yourself. Um, okay. So you tend to be a very kind of person who's going to utilize, you're going to grab what, what you can from these experiences and apply them to other parts. Not good, not bad, not right, not wrong. Maybe that's just what you find works for you. You know, so yeah, I, I would hazard that you're often sort of in planning mind rather than, so Michelle was there, Oh, Lucy, do I like the way it feels in my wrong hand with my eyes closed? <laughs> While Jen is there, oh, oh, how can I use this with my kids? And oh, I'm getting worried because I've only got this much paper left. Mm -hmm. So, right? It's a little bit like that. Um, anybody else care to share some of their experiences? Shall Shulamit. Shulamit, yes. Shulamit, yes. Wow. That, yeah. Oh, very interesting. Are those stuck on figures? Yes. Wow, where are they from? Oh, uh, a block, a printing block? It's um, post-it notes. Oh, it's from post-it notes. Oh, you drew them on the post-it notes and then stuck them on. Very interesting. So this brings a whole nother level to working when we have this um, differentiation of planes. And in, in, in Shumit's art, Shumit's art, it's very clear. She's got this background, which is a bit more soft, a bit more all over, kind of washy. And then the figures are very much differently done and stuck on. That's a very interesting approach. Are those figures specific people, Shumit? Well, I guess they are the characters. The woman appeared many times. So for, she ah. started out um, up in the clouds here. Okay. This is when we turned our paper sideways, which I really, really liked. Ah, and, good. and so she is sort of floating along here. And at the beginning, she was a... Uh, undifferentiated in the story. She was sort of background, I guess. And that's where she ended up. And then she appeared more and more towards the end. And so I, I can imagine that she's maybe the two red people. Okay. Um, so you kind of just let it go and did these figures as they appeared in your mind. You weren't saying, now I'm going to draw the prince, uh, the, the woman, or now the lone shark they just were figures yes what happened what happened was as you would describe it then something would um trigger me mm -hmm. and so you know i was going to do something along the top and then an oval appeared and then that turned into that woman and so their identities would emerge after i drew them Ah, okay. So you let kind of your drawing guide where it was going rather than your head. Yes. Interesting. And why is it, do you think that you liked when we turned the paper? Um, I could do it. 
you could do you mean you had the capacity to do it you were able to do this yeah thing. It's, an, it's an easy yeah. thing yeah. i i like long sinuous continuous lines yeah so that also worked out and i could understand how it would fit in i the tower was the first thing that i drew um, oh. And okay. so I understood how that would relate, how turning it's, it sideways and drawing there would relate to what I already had. I like things to be integrated. And you like things to be balanced. You've got that hand, traced hand, Twice. sort of, yeah, on the other side of that tower shape. Or was that, how did those two shapes come to be? These? Yeah, the the one the tower with its sort of um, extending prongs, and then I thought the other one was the traced hand. Yes, yeah, so there's a traced hand here and a traced hand here. Ah, so it was two traced hands. There are now, two traced hands. Yeah, how did that come to be? That was not on my instruction. No, it's great. It's fine. It's it's actually hey. it's really good because I'm going to go way out on a limb and. Um, so just take this for what it's worth. It speaks to me of the need for balance. I like balance. Also, never follow instructions. Okay, excellent. Okay, yet balance. You're not going crazy. You're not following the instruction. Well, no, what you're doing. I am. You're embellishing the instruction. It's not. Well, I'm making them my them. own. Yeah, yeah. But this, yeah, very much um, the way the figures are positioned also, very much, um, very much a balanced piece as opposed to some of the other ones we've seen. Very interesting. What I did not like was, yes. I, I don't like um, drawing with my left hand. And which and, part was that? And so I made these little flowers, which were going to be part of maybe a meadow type idea. Uh -huh. And I made them very controlled. Uh-huh. So um, yes, well, I'm glad you brought that up because oftentimes, and, and don't hold me to this, but oftentimes in art, when people do these sort of very um, like icons, so it's like a flower and I can't really see them that well, but I'm based on what you said, they are controlled and maybe tight, it's often somebody's trying to, to not be something. It's an expression of either hiding something or refusing. It's, it's sort of like, yeah, I don't wanna do that. And you didn't like doing that with your left hand. So what did you do? Ah, you resorted to something maybe not so true to yourself. I don't think you would do those with your other hand, right? You like long, flowy, as you said, your word sinewy, which is fabulous. And your other hand was this, this kind of tight thing. Very interesting, I think. And the, um, the blind drawing ah. was these like cypress knees that are coming up along the bottom. Ah. And so I, I drew them with my eyes closed, but I had a guide. Oh, okay. So that I wasn't going all over the place. Right, you had the bottom of the page as your guide. Yes, just okay. so that, um, again, so it would all be integrated. It wasn't just gonna be all over the place. Right, thank you. Can anybody else speak to the part that you did with your eyes closed? Did you I like it, hate it? Who said thank they you. liked it? I oh, like thank it. you. Wait. Can I, if, if yeah. nobody is, can I try? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, af, afsane. Af, afsane? Yes, yes, yes. Afsane, you love the eyes closed. Okay, <laughs> tell us everything. Um, I love the eyes closed and I also love the fact you said you can use paint. And that's yes. when I, I went to town. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, is my that, goodness. Yeah. I, is I was three dimensional, though. Is there a part? No, of but the, the hand, I added uh, the hand is on top. It's a collage or, or paper. Oh, okay. 
But it does, yeah, if, looking from here, it does look like three-dimensional on the screen. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but yeah. This is the this is the hand that's stuck. I, I didn't even have glue. I just stuck it on the paint. Oh. But, oh. It, but the whole um, like the markers. I was yeah. um, well. I wasn't having hard time, but it was a, a bit limiting yeah. until. And I wasn't going to use paint because I didn't hear the word paint until you said paint. Then that was it. <laughs> then I just. Literally, I went to, to I, I just, I let loose. And okay. Yeah. 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 And I didn't want for people to run out and get paint or anything. I didn't want people to feel like, oh, I don't have paint, so I can't do this fully. It was an option. But wow, that's pretty wild. Now, look, it's it sits nicely within the perimeter, within the border of your paper. It's all somehow very integrated, even though there was parts that were certainly out of our control, the blind part, the part with the non-dominant an hand and yet somehow it all works very much together are you a little bit afsane are you a little bit ambidextrous that means two-handed uh, no 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 you no. have one strong dominant hand yes right hand okay and you don't use your left hand for anything else that is um regular like oh i don't know no. what some but sport. I, I do paint I, I'm an artist, so I, I, in some ways, in terms of, you know, a little bit of the, the kind of art background came in, right. kind of trying to, right. to um, so the, some of it, oh, I mean, it was very spontaneous, but at yes. the same time, it was also a little bit of um, what I knew. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, but mostly spontaneous, like 90%. Right. Well, yes. And, and, and I organized it to try and make it very spontaneous, not a lot of pre-thinking yeah. and thinking it all away. How about anybody yeah. else? Do you, can you see anything in your Linda? Let's hear from Thank Linda you. and everybody. Um, she's in Kingston. <laughs> so Linda. Okay. Here's your piece. Wow. A dollar sign. The pebbles, a fish. Maybe That's coins. A That's coins. Coins, right? Okay. Go so ahead. I and tell us. I loved. I love that you got us to for me that yes. you got us to turn the paper. And why because is that, Linda? I think because it's like life. Each phase, um, you you start a new phase. And yeah. if the, that's how it felt to me anyway, you know, so yeah. um, turning the paper, I had a chance to start again. Yes. So yes. I liked, I liked that part of it. I dreaded the part using my non-dominant hand. You dreaded. Yeah. Like, that did you very feel? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, now you're falling over. That, that, <laughs> you felt, to come very, back. that felt yeah. very odd. Very, you know, uh, it threw me. And, it was and that's um, here. Okay. That, that part there. Can you, can you put it a little closer? There. So the, those three small things, the hand, the flower. The, the hand and, bag and the flower. Yeah, okay. And, uh, but that, that felt, that felt um, I think because I'm a perfectionist. I mean, oh. not, you, not from the art, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a perfectionist by nature okay. and so I think that really threw me when I had to do that because you were completely out of control it's your yeah. non-dominant yeah. hand and you yeah. had dread and did you feel in your body did you feel a little bit of a heart racer or like yeah, yeah. what am I going to yeah. do here you felt it in your body well that's pretty good though that you were able to feel it in your body the uh, the anxiety associated with how am I going to do this I'm not in control here yeah, exactly. It wasn't, I, I think so. It's funny you say that because for the same reason that you just said you didn't like with your left hand, I didn't like the fact that we were turning the page around. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, what the other thing with yours is the big hand in the middle. Now the hand comes further down the uh, storyline is where I interjected the hand. And it's interesting that it is such a dominant 
part of your piece. Like it almost looks as if it started with that and yet it came many stages later. I think that's for very me, interesting. Yeah, for me the hand, I wanted, when I did it, I wanted it to touch every element of the story. Oh, you're a connector. <laughs> oh, you, you, is that true? Do you like things to be connected? Would yes, you say I, in your life? Yes, I think so. I like, you know, like, yes, I think that's true. You yeah. like things yeah. to be held together in some way, connected oh, in absolutely. some way. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's why I didn't like it when I had to close, uh, not close my eyes. I didn't mind the closing of the eyes one, but the yeah. but yeah. making my left hand do something, it showed me how dominant my right side is. Thank you. So we have a message from Zena, who is agreeing, I think, with Lee. She says she felt the same. She didn't like turning the page. It just seemed against the grain for, for me, for her. Using my other hand was okay, and I looked forward to the surprise of what I could do. Zena, can you show your piece, please? Where are you, Zena? Yeah. And she's here, Zena. Yeah. Yeah. Zena, are you there? I am. One okay, second. here you are, Zena. There you go. Wow, that's an all over design. <laughs> now I'll tell you something that is very interesting about that. I happen to know that Zena is a very um, organic nature kind of person. She lives in the country, lots of nature around her. And I think that that your piece just screams about you in nature and all that whirling nature around you, all the wind and everything. I don't know, that's how it looks to me. How do you feel with it, Zena? Well, it does. So Initially, when we started, I started off of trying to create the the little house and the girl in the doorway. Um, I'm not very so literal. Good. Literally, yeah. You know, I, I do have a little bit of hills and some trees and that in the background. You know, the little heart there, it's that's her home, you know, the love right. of her home. Um, then turning it and creating, um, you know, the person that, uh, with the scowl. Um, again, not very good at that. Tried to do the little in orange, the hands on the hips kind of thing. Right. So uh, was that she was mad or was that you being mad because you had to turn the page? <laughs> probably I think because. you were, that was you being mad. Why did we have to turn the page here? <laughs> probably. It comes out in the art. It comes it out does. in the art. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, go ahead. A little defiance. I'm not turning the page, I guess. Yeah. Put my hands yeah. on the hips. Yeah. Um, and then I I thought we were supposed to turn the page again. And yeah, and we, we use... did turn it another time. We did. So, there were three. And then using my non-dominant hand. Okay. And right. I did the, the pebbles and the bag and, and that. So um, which I was I was kind of surprised at how well I could draw using yeah. my other hand but um i realized that having an operation on my right hand a year and a half ago i had to use a lot of my left hand so i haven't used my left hand that much since i had gained control of my right again but um, seeing what i could do i was pleasantly surprised by that were there any parts of the story that you really related to or disliked or were in some way impacting you, negative or positive? Um, well, I think in general, um, there's always gonna be, you know, the impact that there's always gonna be somebody out there using trickery, mm. um, you know, but sometimes it's just uh, outwitting that the trickster, um, right. you know, not necessarily to be deceptive, um, but when you know that you're kind of stuck in a hard place, um, sometimes you have to uh, think a little bit harder and, and be a little bit more wiser in, in some of the decisions you make. Yeah, wow. Thank you very much, Sina. Did anybody else have that sense of, oh yeah, 
here comes that thing in life again where I'm kind of vulnerable and how am I going to get out of this? And that, that sort of sense, Shannon. Actually, believe it or not, I'm a mixture of, of Asena and, um, and the other person who is a really good drawer who is literal, but it doesn't look like it. Oh, very uh, vibrant. Wow. Okay. Lots of paint and color. Yes. Oh, yeah, what I'm using is, is, is muffin, muffin cup things. So I was really keen when you said, oh, you have use muffin cups. And I said, oh, I have those. So yeah. Using a tempera with water. And what's interesting here is, is believe it or not, I'm a literalist. So everything you said, you know, yeah. Italy, well, I drew Italy first uh, underneath okay. the cupcake thing. And then okay. I, you know, I drew this little shark because I figured the little shark couldn't get past Italy and the girl was over here on a post-it. And oh. I guess, so everything you mentioned, I drew and I used color like Shulamit, but I drew everything like, uh, who was the other person that was very uh, similar? Um, was it Zena, Donna? Yeah. Uh, and, and then what's interesting, I think, now you might, you might figure this out because you, you kind of psychologize, is is I put a frame all the way around my paper. I used every bit of my paper and put a frame around it. And of course you're gonna say, for God's sakes, the woman's full of chaos. Well, at least it's contained. Well, I was going to say the word that comes to my mind is it's explosive. However, yeah. it's, not, um, it's, not a, it's not a dangerous explosion. It's more like, um, a vibrant energetic explosion it's not it's not um it's yeah it's not chaos and it's not um something that's going to damage it's just energy it's just I hope so vibrancy i hope it's not a bomb um, i don't think it's a bomb <laughs> i don't think it's a bomb well, sometimes i feel like that though yeah um, and that's good and we all surely do and you've got a you've got a little casing around it but i don't know oh now when you when oh. you yeah see how different it is now when you hold it up like that it looks quite different to me i almost see a figure there almost a skeleton almost ribs in the top and legs on the bottom but you know i'm looking through zoom and it's it's what i'm seeing is is quite distorted but think, yeah yeah no you could be right there i, I see a different it's almost like a rorschach test where you kind of go yes. this, oh look at this now yeah uh, <laughs> life is basically a rorschach test i think so i yeah. was kind of i'm really struck by this because everybody's done totally different things use different implements different and never, people are different i mean i am not you know you know, I mean, this is, this is like fun, right? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. And it's just a way of exploring um, yourself. So what did you like doing? Did you like um, the blind part? Or did you hate the blind part? Or how did you feel with different elements? Um, you know, it, it, it believe it, it, it was all kind of going on in my head while I was doing it. And so it was more like you were you were making the suggestion and I was following it. Okay. Unlike the woman who just like, like who was show limit, who was there with her hands on her hips going, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm I don't want to turn my paper. So no, do I you- I my paper, I followed everything. Okay. And is that something you tend to do in your life? Never. Are you okay to go along? Never. I'm, a, well, I'm, I'm an anarchist and an iconoclast. You're an anarchist and an iconoclast, yet you come to this and you're willing to be guided. Guided and I put a frame around the whole mess. Well, isn't that very interesting? Do you do art very often? I used like, to. You used to. So you're. this is not unfamiliar territory. To uh, well, you. I was doing, well, no, I love using paint. I love using, I'm, I'm, I make signs. I, I love, I love, uh, I love oh, of course, things. you're an anarchist, right? <laughs> Down with, yeah, right, yeah. That's what right. I do. I make demonstration signs and banners. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is very interesting. And there's your energy. There's your anarchistic energy all exploding. But, but it's in a sign. I think you made a sign that says Shannon. Well, it certainly does. You know, I was thinking of the term boho today for Bohemian. And I was thinking... No. That's my I don't style. think it's boho. I think it's. Oh. I think it's too energetic. It's too. 
it's positive. It's just. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. It's great. Well, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Um, anybody else who has uh, uh, any experiences they'd like to share? I'll Maybe, share. Oh, okay. Uh, Lisa? Okay. Um, let's see. Let me Sorry. get my, let me get my <laughs> picture. Sorry. I started out with a, um, smaller piece of paper so i didn't have to do as much a i don't know smaller you... piece of paper so you'd have to do less work well, it's the old... too sorry i'm having trouble setting up um okay. it's not working very well is it it's showing my background it is showing your background for some reason you but see... we see your piece it it comes and it goes. Okay, oh. maybe I maybe I shouldn't share. I guess what I what I could share is I Your ended experience. up using objects and labels for some reason. I had these little gems, so I did a, a kind of like a wedding ring, and I did a pot of gold. So I put these gold little gems, and then I ended up drawing um, a bell, like for a wedding or a tower, and I wrote bells. And then I had yarn and I tied a knot, so I wrote tie the knot. And then at the bottom I said, or not. <laughs> so it was all about decisions kind of to me. Well, it was, it was like, about decisions. Like she had to make a decision and I had to decide on what I was doing. Um, yeah, well, I'm sorry, I can't share it very well with my camera, but I ended up, when I did my hand, um, I ended up tracing my hand over, the diamond ring that I drew, so it kind of fit on your wedding ring. Oh, oh right, right, it fit, right. Yeah, so. so Lisa, I want to ask you, in your life, all these decisions constantly, is your profession, like, are you in a position where you're always having to do this or that, this yes. or that? I, I've been, uh, I've had different jobs. I'm retired now, but I've been a long-term substitute teacher um, for like 30 years on top of my regular job. So every time you go in a classroom every day, it's like, oh boy, you better be on your toes. <laughs> and you're feeling, and you felt that very strongly. You're constantly this or this, this or this, this or this. Yes, yes, very interesting. much. Interesting, so. very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that with oh, us. Very welcome. interesting. <laughs> Nikki and then Brian. Okay, there. So I'm, I'm just putting on a light so you can see it better. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. There are some kind of wrappers stuck on to Band-Aid? No. Band-Aid wrapper. Wow, with blood, she Nikki really cuts to the meat of the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, um, yeah. I got, I got sucked into this emotionally right away. I, it okay. was, it was all about the injustice of the whole situation for this girl. Okay. Um. So to me, it was like, hell no, that's not going to happen. I am walking out of here. I'm gone, 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 gone. This is not my problem. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of white pebbles and only one black one. Cause if I have anything to say about it, this is not going to happen. I'm, she's not going to get forced to marry somebody, you know? So I, so that's, were, could we say Nikki, you were angry Would that yeah. be fair? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. I was angry. Yep. Yeah. And that was, and then this was like, I'm just gonna stick my feet down hard and plant them because I glued stuff and I'm not budging. This is not going to happen. <laughs> and there's blood. Blood is often associated with anger, right? It's, um, uh, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be blood. I used a lipstick. This is my hand, ah. the hand. And I had a red marker too, but yeah. Okay. And how did you feel at all these changes? Were they angering you? Did you get angry when we had to turn the paper or do this or that? Um, no, not, uh, no, I didn't feel angry. Uh, uh, the first time we had to do it, I was like, oh, how's this going to work? But then I thought, nah, just go with it and yeah. push yeah. forward kind of thing. And yeah, uh, and it was 100% emotion for me. 
Isn't that interesting? Yeah, <laughs> lots of long, sweeping, straight lines. Donna's, all kinds of circles, very organic. Xena, very organic -y forms. Look at Nikki's, lots and lots of long, sweeping lines. Yeah. Very, um, got a lot of sort of movement in a direction versus feeding back into each other. It's like this, this kind of broad movement going on. And what is that yellow piece that looks like it's stuck on? What was this? that part? Yeah. These are, oh, this part was, um, I think it was, wait a minute, let me think. Uh, huh, huh. This was the second part of the story. So this is, uh, that was a post-it note that I uh, tore in strips and there's arrows and it was like, nope, 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 she's out of there. She's out of there. She's out of there. She's moving away from the situation because it's unfair. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I, the words uh, dragged kicking and screaming come to mind. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> For this piece. Yeah. Thanks, Nikki. Brian, Brian, what have you got on over there? All right, so. Oh, wow, a strong green. Is that some sort of tissue paper or what is that? That's, uh... That's tape. Oh, and that that's was actually tape. my favorite part when you said, you know, like the muffin cups and stuff. Right. Um, oh. I found I, I didn't know what I would do with it. And I ended up using it to kind of tie the images together. Oh. I think it's interesting that at least three of us did a tower. You never mentioned a tower, but I never I, mentioned a tower. But you said Italy. So I guess Freud might be interested, but you said Italy and we drew towers. So I drew yeah. a tower in Lombardy poplars. But I then said I man, uh, and we drew towers. No, <laughs> it's just a little, you know, phallic joke. Yeah, maybe. Um, this was the lecherous uh, money lender. Oh, does he have a big He's got a rich nose? man's collar. Yeah. But then you asked us to, to uh, rotate. Yeah. And um, so there's a hand, like I, I shared the feeling, the negative feelings, like it was all anger. I put a hand up oh. saying no and oh. a scornful. This was supposed to be the dad being scornful, but oh. his face turned into an owl. It did turn into an stop. owl. Yeah. Wow. With a yeah. And, um, and then I guess we moved again. But when you said we could use a symbol, yes, I, I found great relief. You know, I, I had three symbols I could break out of trying to do images. And so, uh, what, why did up. that's interesting, Brian? What do you know about that, about yourself, that moving into something that's just sort of readily accepted, readily available, I don't have to think, pluck down a heart, it's a symbol. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interest I've had lately in putting words into art. And it does uh, just break through, and it's very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Because then, then you had the blind, doing it blind, I did these. Right. Two, two black pebbles on a hand. The oh. only thing I liked about it was that it forced me to simplify. Ah, when you did it blind. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so <laughs> if we listen carefully, Brian, you like the simplification of when it was the blind part, and you also yeah. like the simplification of the symbols part. I'm wondering if you're looking, if you're finding things a bit maybe overwhelmed and complicated right now and you're looking to make things simpler yeah Would to that understand be a yeah. fair enough sure that's fair enough and up here i have uh unfortunately you're getting the reverse with this camera but um justice when she finally made her choice but i had no positive feeling like through the whole thing it wasn't um wasn't so much anger as fear for her and a uh, hopelessness you know it was oh. the, the lecturer's old guy was the rich one and yeah. The dad was angry, but trying to say stop. And then it was kind of inevitable. It was heading downhill with the two stones and then uh, and no love. And then finally, um, justice. It was a right. bit of justice. Yeah. But just a little bit, but mainly the dominant thing was perhaps fear. Yeah, fear for her. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. She was falling down a dark hole. It wasn't going to be good. So. Yeah. Well, thanks, Brian. Very interesting, especially well, your liking of the the more sim simplified things. Did anybody yeah, else have a dominant? Too. Sorry. Just I just wanted to say yeah. one thing about rotating yeah. the page. Yes. Once when you, the, like I did a first thing, a second thing. So when yes. we had done the third part, yes. it would have been relating to this. But once we switched, then whatever I did here, this would be attached to it. So it's sort of like this becomes more dominant. It, was, uh -huh. it, it forced me to leave this idea behind. And I liked that. You liked it? Why? Yep. You think? Well, or... because it, well, maybe because it took it out of my hands. I didn't have oh, to make it as right. easy. You know, right. the, the pattern was going to come out of this process of ideas that was going to happen independently from my right. designing a piece or something. So I've heard a couple of times now, some people liked when these decisions were taken out of their hands, where some people found they were making more decisions. And I'm wondering, Shannon, you know, with your activism, you're making a lot of decisions and having to take a lot of stances and probably defend yourself quite a bit versus here you were just led. It's somebody else's responsibility. I don't have to prove, just I'm doing this. It's a, maybe a breather, maybe. Did anybody else have a dominant emotion? So Brian had found a, a lot of fear. Uh, Nikki had found she was quite angry. Did anybody else have a dominant or strong feeling sense to this little project. Maybe on the next page, hold on. I'm just going to, I'm going to click on an arrow. I wrote down um, Ada. Ada, hi Ada. Hi. I wrote down freedom. I don't know because freedom. on my page, but then it got to, uh, you see. You wrote the word freedom, can yeah. we see? Well, yeah, but then I blotted it out. You see what happened is a lot of stuff were not fitting on my page. So things were littered. So Italy, Italy to me represented this uh, lemon grove that I walked through in Italy. So I had a lemon tree and a lemon grove here. And then I, I had a portrait of the lady, of the uh, girl. That's a girl. Um, and then uh, the blind thing was the um, the bag with the pebbles. Uh, oh yeah. And you know what? I, I didn't find it was very challenging. And then what I thought about then was that I'm, I do pottery. So when you're throwing on the wheel, you're always using both hands. Uh, both hands oh. equally. And I thought, oh, maybe that's why I didn't find that really difficult. Um, the the blind thing was my little pebble path, which was sort of a, didn't turn out that well, but anyways, I've got little pebbles here in a path. How um, did you find the rotating of the page, Ada? Uh, not too, too bad, um, yeah. And I'm not sure at what point I wrote down freedom, but then it's all, and then, but it's, it's here, but it's underneath the, <laughs> the rest, the last one, where I just drew a rainbow because she was, she didn't have to marry the guy. Yeah. And so, so it kind of, it's underneath there, but I, I you know, it was, I guess the feeling was of a, even though it was a dark situation, I still had a positive feeling about the outcome. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't going to turn out as dark. So maybe I'm an optimist <laughs> at heart. And I just yeah. think, oh, yeah. Things well, maybe are you are. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Thanks. Just in the interests of time, um, David, Pal, where are you? And the other thing is, does anybody else have anything that they would like to share or that they noticed? Um, so help questions to guide you um if oh if you have a figure in your work does it have all its limbs or are there hands or feet missing these this is something to consider um what really caught your attention in the story um look at 
the negative shapes in your work. That means the shapes where there is nothing. Some of you very strongly filled up your whole page. And I'm just thinking now, Ada, you very much filled up your whole page. If there were parts that were unleft, maybe, or parts that um, were not drawn on, do they in themselves create any kind of a shape? Um, how was that putting tracing your hand on for a lot of you think about that one I think it was one of the bigger images a lot of people had smaller things how was that to bring whack your hand down and trace around it and that of course represented bringing yourself into the page that's what that little piece was about so we had this story a land long ago and far away and then here we are reality you visceral slap down in the middle of that page so, so think about that um yeah how, we've discussed the non-dominant hand how did it feel think about it also when i asked you to use your outstretched arm to draw versus being able to be a little bit more controlled. Um, consider also when you look at your piece, the degrees of complexity and or simplicity in your marks. Are there areas where your marks are really simple are there areas where they're very complicated or complex forms? And um, just note these things. And um, Shannon, Yacha, please have people hold up their art and I'll do a screenshot. I would love that so much if, if we could do that. And also, please do not throw this away. I urge you very strongly, keep your peace. Put it aside. Do not look at it until maybe Wednesday. Think nothing about it. Nothing. Bring it out of the drawer or the cupboard or from under your bed on Wednesday and see what twigs for you. I'm pretty sure something will twig. Okay, some kind of thought or some perception something, some insight, something will come after it's all sat for a bit. So we're all holding up a piece. Anita, your piece has to come. And Shannon's gonna take a picture. And David, do you have anything to say? Well, I would, uh, we're running, I mean, this has been an amazing session, Yadja. Uh, we're running out of time because of yeah. the Zoom booking, but I have to tell you that uh, this is, I, I, I've, I've written down some of the, in addition to observing uh, the session, I've written down some of your fantastic quotes that, for example, life is a Rorschach test. It, it comes oh. out of the water. <laughs> um, I think well, it was, you know, It's I all think, kind of blotchy in other words for some of us is what the it, meaning but is. It, but it all comes in and I thought that, uh, I mean, all the, all the artwork, I don't want to put a like a value on it, but just the range of expression and the yeah. interpretation, the reflect the the re reflection of the um, sort of the psychosocial yeah. reflection of, of everybody's um, uh, attitudes or uh, personality or values, and then the the contrasting. Um, uh, efforts of the non-dominant hand and, and, and sort of the surprises, the things that come out that we're not even aware of until we lose control. Right. Uh, right. It's just, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. I, uh, I, I didn't uh, draw anything myself um, because I'm a little afraid of what it might reveal about myself. Oh yeah, but you, maybe just, you, you just make everybody else you organize the thing. <laughs> No, yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. I, but I mean, this is, but I, I'm certainly going to do it. I'm sure Anne Mayhew, um, our, our board member, will fall through as well. But this has been an absolutely um, delightful presentation. And the wonderful thing about it is uh, to, to the audience of uh, 
35 plus is that uh, everybody participated, everybody did, was really, really put a lot of, um, I don't know if thought is the right word, but effort I I into it because it's not so much a thinking process, it's more of a reactive process, I think. Yeah. And, and everybody really, um, you know, got, got heavily involved and uh, the, ex the self-expression was just beautiful um, and, uh, and, and different, you know, using, uh, you know, three dimensions or two dimensions or different uh, areas of the, of the canvas, different types of medium. Uh, it was really, really fun. And I think the most important thing, it was interactive. I think we were able to cover everybody. Everybody yeah. was able to express their uh, uh, art. And I think that's what really made this a wonderful presentation. Thank you. So, so I, um, to the audience, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Yadja for an outstanding uh, workshop, because uh, it's really a work, more of a workshop than a presentation. And thank the audience for attending the online session. I, I, I think I'm correct in saying that you really enjoyed it. Uh, you will be receiving an online survey that we would like you to complete in return. Uh, I think it's through SurveyMonkey. And the survey does not allow for comments, but if you have any you know, narrative comments, uh, you can please send them to myself, uh, David Globerman at supportingcast at palottawa.org. That's supportingcast at palottawa.org. And your feedback is really important to us because it will, whoops, it'll inform us for uh, future programming. We're, we're more than likely going to be having other Zoom presentations on all sorts of subjects. So um, your feedback is really helpful. And as I mentioned to you right at the top, uh, Yadja's session and, and all the other sessions that we've already conducted, as well as the sessions to come, are being recorded and will be posted on the PAL YouTube channel. And we would encourage you and your family and friends and colleagues to check it out and click like uh, and share and subscribe to the channel as well. Your comments, uh, as I mentioned before, are really encouraged. So this was, I believe this was the sixth or seventh um, presentation of the of Spotlight 2021. We're about halfway through. And uh, Please check out the other sessions that are coming up. Our next session will actually be on uh, Friday night at 7 p.m. It's one of the rare ones, rare ones on Friday. It's really a, uh, a, a redo of a previous Zoom presentation uh, where Zoom failed us. Uh, but it won't fail us on Friday. You know, we're not talking about it, so Zoom, Zoom will be working that night. So we hope to see you again next Friday at 7 p.m. for Lola Ryan's presentation. And then on the Saturday, the day after, uh, which I believe is March the 6th, uh, tune in for Jody Chris Jansen. Jody Chris Jansen, she'll be presenting. So you can go to um, the PalOttawa.org uh, website to register on Eventbrite for uh, those two presentations, which is next week, as well as the remaining ones. Um, so that's about it. Um, I want to thank you once again um, for a fantastic presentation, Yadja. Yadja, do you have anything to say? Anything? Uh, comments? Sorry, somebody was saying something. I do. I have a question. There's somebody, I hope they're still here. They had a big red lip on their piece and it had writing in it, but I think they've left. I was curious as to what the writing was. But other than that, uh, I want to say thank you, everybody, for coming out. And I hope you had some fun and uh, learned a little something about yourself. And uh, yadjaromaniac.com. I don't know what else to say. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Yadja. Thank you to the audience. Have a lovely evening. Yeah. And you know what? Stay engaged. Here's the hand. Here's the hand. <laughs> Stay engaged. And you know, keep doing art, whether whether it's you know yeah. art or music or <clears throat> stay engaged because that is the key, not just to getting through this pandemic, but it's the key to life. Yeah. It's really the key to life. Just stay healthy, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, 
And art makes art in all its capacity makes the world a better place. Those aren't just words. I mean, that's that's a reality. It's so, humanity. Uh, it's, it's our humanity. humanness. Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. thank you again, Yajin. Thank you to okay, the audience. You. And thank have a lovely you. Saturday night. Okay, thank you, Bye. everybody. See Bye -bye. some of you soon. Bye. 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 Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye, everybody.